Greetings, everyone. Hey, this is a wonderful day to be alive, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> On a cooler, only yeah. 90 degree uh, day here in South Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyhow, well, you know what? The Lord uh, asked me to spend this morning with him, and uh, I was going to go to a conference this morning, but he said, will you spend the morning with me? So, that's better than any conference speaker. Yeah. So anyhow, the Lord uh, had me study 1 Kings 18 this morning, and I just showed Lynn when I looked on my phone on my Bible gateway thing, it's set to come up on uh, 1 Kings 18. 18. So I'm like, okay, I, I know the Lord is speaking here. But um, as I was reading this over, you know, it's it's about Elijah and Ahab and the prophets of Baal and mm -hmm. Asherah, but... Here's what I, I noticed, um, and I'm going to be reading some of this. Three times it is said, Behold, Elijah is here. And that's why I feel the Lord is saying, Behold, the spirit of Elijah is here. Hmm. Okay? Because there's the, the drought in the land, and um, Jezebel has cut off all the prophets of Baal, or prophets of God, and Obadiah. He is on a mission, he thinks from Ahab, but it's really from God because he's hidden away a hundred prophets and feeding them, um, you know, keeping them from getting killed. Well, now um, Obadiah is on a mission from, um, from Ahab, and he's on his way to find Elijah, and he says, Behold, Elijah is here. And like I said, three times now, Elijah tells Obadiah, go and tell Ahab, behold, Elijah is here. Okay, so the prophet, here's what I'm finding is the true prophets of God. There's people who are truly prophets of God, who speaks the or oracles of God. And, you know, their word is not going to fall to the ground. And there's some who are like self-proclaimed prophets. We can all hear from God, but I feel there's a demarcation that God is making this demarcation now, and he's mm -hmm. uh, a line of demarcation. Um, if we, well, that line is, it's an action of fixing the boundary or limits of something. That's what the dictionary says. Okay, but I believe this is, it's a dividing line, and God is dividing the, the true from the false, or the, yep. uh, you know, the, the profane from the precious okay so I want to read some of this um, this is first Kings 21 okay Jezebel has killed the prophets of the Lord Obadiah has hidden a hundred of them now Elijah God tells Elijah to go um, you know talk to Ahab so, um, let's see. Okay, Ahab, excuse me, um, Elijah needs to get all of the prophets, the false prophets together. And so they gather 450, this is verse 19, they gather together um, at Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of of Asherah, and that's who Queen Jezebel, you know, she really loved her Asherah. So they sent Ahab, um, so Ahab sent all the Israelites and assembled the prophets at Mount Carmel. Elijah came near to all the people and said, how long will you halt and limp between two opinions? And see, that's where we are today. We have the precious and the profane. Because some, if you're speaking the words of the Lord, they are precious. And if you're ad-libbing, you know, and saying things that God didn't say, then it is profane. Mm -hmm. If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer a word. Okay, so they set up, uh, they took the two bulls and they, they set up, uh, he had the prophets, the false prophets go first. And they, they prepared the altar and they built the, put the, logs on or whatever it was you know put everything together and they tried all day long to get that call down fire from heaven right nothing happened and you see that's the thing god hears 
God hears us as we speak. Yeah. But he's not going to answer the false. So uh, uh, this was this was uh, Elijah's doing. You know, this is what he said, and the people didn't answer. Okay, so they spent all day going through doing this, and then at midday, this is verse twenty nine. Midday passed. They played the part of the they played the part of the prophets, until the time came for offering and the evening sacrifice. When there was no voice, no answer, no one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, "Come near to me." All the people came near to him, and he re repaired the old altar of the Lord that had been broken down by Jezebel. And see, that's what's happened. The fivefold ministry has been in place. The government has, of God has come together now. And I believe that breach has been restored. Okay? Yeah. So now, um, Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. And with the stones, Elijah built an altar in the name of the Lord. He made a trench about the altar as great as, great as would contain the two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bowl in pieces and laid it on the wood and said, Fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering of the wood. He did this three times. So they did this. So now it's totally saturated. And what happens? <laughs> he calls upon the Lord, right? And the Lord consumes the offering. Mm -hmm. So now what, what happens? He says, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people m may know that you, the Lord, are God and have turned their hearts back to you. And that's what the spirit of Elijah will do, and that's what is mm -hmm. here now. Turning the hearts of the fathers to the son, the sons to the father, the hearts of man back to God. There's been a lot of, um, oh, you know, bless the people, you know, it's just our ignorance of the word, but, you know, a lot of false doctrine, a lot of false teaching, and people, people have followed, you know, just in, in their own ignorance have followed wrong things. But God has restored those altars. And he is sending, separating the true from the false, the proud from the precious. And he's consuming all that. He's consuming all that is his, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And burning up that which is not his. Okay? Yeah. To turn people back to him. So, well, what else have we got here? Let me turn my next page. <laughs> okay. So the prophets of Baal were destroyed. And, uh, and now, here's a neat thing. Elijah tells Ahab to go eat and drink, right? And so Ahab is off doing his thing. And now, but you know, the people, the people, when they saw what happened, I mean, they all agreed, this is God. See, and that's what will happen when we really see the power and the demonstration working through God's people, okay? Each one of us can hear from God, and each one of us needs to obey God. And when, mm -hmm. when the unsaved, and even the saved, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot that are saved that really aren't walking with the Lord, when they see the demonstration of his love and his power, his mercy, his grace working through us, and their people are healed and set free, delivered, it's going to turn their hearts back to the Lord. Now, Elijah, he tells Ahab to go eat and drink. And then he goes, Elijah goes to Mount Carmel, and that's what he's, he's waiting for the rain, because God says he's going to send the rain, right? So... He's listening. He's listening for the sound of the abundance of rain. And what does he see? He sees the little cloud. The yeah. little cloud, yeah. Yeah, he sees just the little cloud. But what did he do? And this reminded me of Bob, and just like a week before Bob passed. Bob went through this process sitting on the side of the bed. And, I mean, he couldn't walk and he you know, couldn't get up or anything, but... He was like birthing. He kept mm -hmm. back and forth, rocking back and forth. And that's what Elijah did. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, let me see. And Eli this is verse 41. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of the rain. So he was prophesying that. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he bowed himself down to the earth and put his face between his knees, a birthing position. Mm -hmm. And that's what Bob was doing. And he said to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. Okay, now here's that sea of restless humanity, right? Yeah. There's the birthing about to take place. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. Elijah said, Go again seven times. And the seventh time the servant said, A, a cloud as small as a man's hand is arising out of the sea. And Elijah said, Go up and say to Ahab, Hitch your chariot and go down, lest the rain stop you. Now, mm -hmm. that's faith. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you got a cloud this big, you know, this big. Okay. And in a little while, the heavens were black and the wind swept clouds, and there was a great rain, and Ahab went to Jezreel. The hand of the Lord was on Elijah. He girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel, nearly 20 miles. Can you imagine? I mean, he's running. Here's a guy in his chariot. And here comes a man running faster than the horses, right? Mm -hmm. But it was important that Elijah got to Jezreel before Ahab. See, Ahab still was, you know, an ungodly person, but the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And Jezreel means God will sow. Mm -hmm. So it was important that he got there first yeah. to sow the seeds of godliness. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because God had redeemed redeemed the land. So it was important yeah. that he got there first. So I believe in all of that, what the Lord was showing me today is like it's a time of his prophets, the true prophetic voices coming forth. Yeah. Um, you know, we all can hear from God. We all can speak a word yeah. of prophecy. Okay? Mm -hmm. doesn't make everybody a prophet. But mm -hmm. we need to watch the words that we speak. Yeah. Speak what the Lord gives us in the spirit of the Lord. You don't need to add to or subtract from, kind of like the book of Revelation. Don't add to it. Don't take from it, but speak what God gives you because his yeah. word, and that's what he told about, his word never fails. Right. When we start adding stuff to it, it's a lot of mixture, then yeah. it will. It will fail. Mm -hmm. But um, anyhow, you have something you want to add? Yeah, well, that? it reminded me the the line of demarcation that you were talking about. Um, I actually spoke about that in the 2019 uh, Shepherd's Rod. Wow, and I forgot. <laughs> Did, well, <laughs> no, that's okay. Hey, it, it, it just reminded me. I, I was thinking, yeah, you know what? I spoke about that um, in, a, in a section that I wrote about the uh, almonds. Hmm. And um, there were a couple different things. It, it was a good, a good six or eight pages that I wrote about the almonds. And um, the one thing that the the Lord was saying uh, was it was right after uh, the rebellion with Korah, uh, and right. and they're saying, well, we still don't know if if, uh, if you're God's choice for you know to lead us, and uh, and we don't know about this Aaron, and you know like somebody needs to be in charge, and we you know. One of us needs to be in charge. And so the Lord spoke to Moses and said, you know, get a get the rod from each tribe's leader and we're going to we're going to do a line of demarcation. We're going to show mm -hmm. you who I pick. That's right. And uh, the one who has the almonds or the one who has a uh, budding, that mm -hmm. was it. The one who has a budding uh, will be the, you know will be God's choice. And uh, so everybody, so there's 12 tribes, so there's 12 rods, plus there's Aaron's rod. And they take all the rods and put them in the Holy of Holies overnight. And the next day, uh, they come in and they get it, and Aaron's rod is the one that it budded, <laughs> flowered, and had almonds. So it was yeah. not just budding, but it was all three. It was... It was the the it was like the author and the finisher of the faith. There's yeah. 
it, it was all three. Um, so, but that was the line of demarcation. Every it was basically if you read the that the whole uh, instance, it, it basically the Lord is saying, "I'm gonna I'm gonna do this." basically to protect everybody and to shut the mouths of those who are who are rising up against you that's so right. there's there's a prophetic voice that's here um however there's also a a false prophetic voice and you know they they probably think that they're doing god's work <laughs> and uh they are just not what they think they're doing. They're they're actually causing a resistance, which is maturing the saints. So the the thing that you know, like our response is like let's let's <laughs> let's have that demonstration of God's uh, power and God's love, and and uh, that way we can all say the Lord is God. The, That's right. The Lord is who is in charge here and uh you know what i was wrong i need to i need to get right i need to get this thing uh in in god's perspective and submit it to the lord so that i'm not standing on the wrong side of of god's will mm -hmm. and uh because well, god's gonna get mind. his god's gonna get his way either with us or in spite of us so uh i want to be on the with him instead of the in spite of that's good yeah. yeah i forgot about you having that yeah yeah so but it'll it'll uh, the demarcation is there to both show who's god's choice and to get everybody else in line yeah that's it but you know i feel too like it's that spirit of elijah you know that's yeah. that's here mm -hmm. now and um, and it is to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the children of the fathers. But it's it's people turning them back to God. Yeah. You know, because there's Bob would always say, you know, it's it's only a remnant, ten percent of the people that say they're Christian are really saved or really walking with the Lord. There's just that remnant. So. Yeah. But you know, God, God is merciful, and He gives us time, and. And mm -hmm. I think he's really giving the body of Christ time to turn back to him and walk in righteousness instead of pride. So yeah. anyhow, hope this was meaningful and that uh, I get something out of it. So be blessed. Amen. Amen.